Will AI tools replace you in the workforce? It's a question we must seriously consider because AI has arrived. It's just getting started. I, mean, I think we need to regulate AI safety, right, frankly, because um, it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. I think people should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this. I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. A little bit, yeah, You personally. I, I think if I said I were not, you should either not trust me or be very unhappy I'm in this job. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and today we are going to talk about will AI take over automation testing or software testing job from us? We have been hearing about this artificial intelligence a lot these days, right? The machine learning that we have been hearing has transformed into the generative artificial intelligence in the form of ChatGPT and BARD and also a lot of companies are working toward this artificial intelligence in terms of Baidu, you know, the search giant in, the, in China. They are actually also building their own AI and also NVIDIA is also building their own AI. So a lot of companies are working behind the scene to bring artificial intelligence everywhere. There are two group of people, one group of people actually talking about the advantages of the artificial intelligence and the other group actually talks about the negative impact which the artificial intelligence can bring to humanity. Even the uh, co-founder of the OpenAI, this uh, chat GPT that we have been using all these days, Elon Musk is also warning that the chat GPT can be a a risk for the humanity at the moment. So before we get into the question on whether the artificial intelligence is going to take our job like manual testing or automation testing job, let's first understand some of the benefits that the artificial intelligence currently provide to us right now. As we all know that the artificial intelligence has already started to integrate within our code base already. So if you know that in olden days we used to write code in the notepad and then we transformed into IDE or so-called integrated development environment with the form of Visual Studio, NetBeans IDE, Rider IDE and IntelliJ IDE. All these IDEs helped us write the better coding, better coding practices and patterns and stuff. And then these IDE started to give us the intelligence to write the better coding as well like we don't have to remember each and every method which the particular uh, property or the class provides it's just going to pop up for us automatically due to the because the intelligence is going to come up automatically right those things will actually help us to write the better coding but now with the github copilot tab 9 and all these softwares the coding suggestions are automatically coming to us in the form of like code blocks and also they are suggesting us the better coding pattern as well as the better coding syntax and also now AI is suggesting us the better type safe null reference proof and secure code for us so that is amazing as well so these things are actually happening at the moment with the github copilot and if you have heard about the news of the github copilot x well github copilot x is going to help reduce not only just the keystroke of the code generation but it is also going to be generating as the context aware code blocks as well which is also amazing because that's something we have not seen so far and that is also coming to us right now not only that it is also going to help us debug the code and also write the unit testing of the code and also it's going to help us in writing documentation as well which is amazing so these are the things which were not there before and everything is just jumping in right now with github copilot x and not only that some of the boring tasks that we used to do as a developer in the terms of the pr request description to be created every time while there is a pull request to be created then those things are also actually you can automate is in the github copilot x so as you can see that this GitHub Copilot or Tabnan or any other IDE completion artificial intelligence based tool not only help us writing the better code but it also helps us to give us some of the suggestions which we might not have thought about while we start writing the code and also if you are a tester who have to learn all these different automation testing tools like Selenium, Playwright, Cypress or CodeSub.js and all these tools as you know that they will have their own language binding like C Sharp, Java or JavaScript and all these languages have to be learned as well for the test automation to be working as expected and you will see that there are so many things that the tester actually end up learning instead of really improving the quality of the software they end up actually learning the automation testing tools and the coding language and then they don't really focus more on improving the quality of the product. While these things are going to be automated pretty quickly using this 
GitHub Copilot or any other upcoming tools in the market, then you will see that the quality of the product can be eventually improved as well. So as you can see that yay is really working a lot harder for us, right? It, it is trying to remove so many babysitting work that we have been doing in terms of maintaining the GitHub uh, check-ins descriptions and also removing some of the documentation needs it, we can actually automate all those process and then we can bring it in into our ai to do that for us you can see that so many things are actually being automated in our workflow itself right then what is the problem really then why is this ai is going to be a problem for us especially in terms of our automation testing job or the manual testing job now as you can see here typically a company will have a team something like this where you're going to have for example like seven developers and three qas and there are two functional testers and there is going to be one uh, automation test engineer and then there is going to be two business analyst business owners and then there is going to be a product owner or technical manager and then there's going to be one sre and there is going to be one delivery manager so this is going to be a typical product structure is going to look like and as you can see all these developers are going to be writing the code there may be a couple of junior engineers a couple of mid-tier engineer and there will be a lead engineer who are going to be working in developing the product based on the requirements and stuff and there will be two functional qas as i told they're going to be testing based on the code that is being built and being shipped to to be tested by the quality engineers and there is going to be one poor automation engineer who is going to be writing the code for all these changes and uh, the features is going to come up but as you can see over here because there are so many mix of developers in any team like mid-tier senior as well as a junior engineer if the junior engineer and the mid engineer are going to be doing some of the most redundant work uh, pretty much like uh, creating the documentation or writing some of the unit test cases or even writing some of the code that is something that uh, and senior engineer can write very very quickly because all those babysitting works can be pushed into the other team members so that they can learn as well if you think that this is some of the team's structure is going to look like or maybe some of the complex work is going to be taken care of by the lead engineer if those things if can be automated or maybe taken care of by this artificial intelligence then we could actually reduce the team size instead of having so many developers and tester we can reduce or shrink them into this number of count as you can see over here and you can see that over here in this particular team as well you will have a team of like developers which is going to be a mix of mid-tier junior and the lead engineer but there is going to be like two engineers like two software qa engineer who are going to be doing functional testing and the automation testing well, you can see that at this particular point of time, the automation test engineer may not be just focusing just on the automation test code execution or code development. Rather, he will be focusing on the functional testing aspect of the application as well, even though while they do it right now, they will not get more time in focusing just on functional testing or just on automation testing because having both of them together is going to be really a nightmare. Rather, if these process of writing the automation testing code is going to be automated a lot, then the functional test engineer and the automation test engineer can both sit together and think about the functional aspect of the application and writing the code is going to be seamless and in fact the functional test engineer can also contribute to the automation testing and they both can become an automation test engineer in future that's how the transformation is going to happen in this point of time so long story short you can see that in a whole team it is not just the qa are going to be affected even the developers as well as the business analysts are going to be affected in terms of the number of headcount within a team again it depends upon the complexity of the business as well i don't mean that for every business this is going to be applicable it is going to be changing based on the requirement of the product and how the applications are going to be de designed and developed so it's going to be entirely to the team who is going to decide how the applications are going to be built and also the team is going to be structured so it's going to be entirely based on the team's requirements and structure again this is just a classical example that i'm talking about but maybe in future the number of headcount that i'm talking about here in four to two ratio can even be reduced to probably three to one not sure so that is how the artificial intelligence is going to take a hit on the headcounts so finally as you can see over here the qa job is going to be enhanced a bit here because the functional test engineer as well as the automation engineer are going to be contributing toward the business requirement of the application and also improving the overall quality of the application and meeting the requirement traceability matrix of our application to see if the product quality is matching based upon the requirement 
as well as the requirement that we have tested is also being traced perfectly based on the automation as well as the functional testing. And most importantly, the overall automation time spent for creating a scenario will be tremendously reduced because let's say if you're gonna be creating like 10 scenario per day, you probably will be ending up creating a high quality at least like six or seven scenarios more than what you do most of the time and that too more effective way that is the most important thing that you can achieve using these kinds of artificial intelligence tools well the final question now we need to ask is will this ai is going to start hitting hard within our automation or manual testing job then i would probably say no because you definitely need to have a team who are going to be doing a functional testing as well as who are going to be doing a requirement collection and also doing a manual verification of each and every work. Even though you say everything can be automated, you can't delay 100% that the software that is being built by a software is going to be complying exactly what it is. I mean, you can see that the process has improved a lot. Doesn't mean that the whole automation testing or the testing job itself can be replaced by an uh, and machine or an AI altogether. So that's not going to be happening at least for now or maybe in the any foreseeable future. But for sure, artificial intelligence is going to be a very, very helpful thing for us, like both developer as well as the tester in upcoming days. Hey, have you started working in 2006 like me? At least like in 2005, 2006, while we joined any company, there used to be a lot of network engineers who used to come to your machine and start doing some fixing of your application. And also they try to help you to install the software and also configure the network. Do you think these things are right now happening with all these laptops and work from home options? I don't probably see any of the network engineers ever in almost five to six years while I came to Malaysia or New Zealand for a long time. And also most of the time we call them as IT support rather the uh, network engineers because there is no network engineer as such in any company. There is gonna be just a VPN provider and all these SaaS systems is gonna take care of our networking of the systems. That's how everything is right now. So what do you think the network job right now? It is already faded, right? 